everybody, welcome to Connecting with Specialists. We are very happy to have George Wells from George Wells, Wars of Us uh, of London to join us today. Welcome, George. Good morning. Good morning, Andy. Andy. Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your gallery, your specialties? Yes, of course. We are George Wells, Works of Art, and together with my partner, Luis Vignes, um, we have two galleries, one in London and one in Lisbon, yeah. and we specialize in cross-cultural works of art um, that resulted from the meeting of uh, Euro Europeans and, and uh, Africa, uh, India and China. But our, our really emphasis is in Chinese porcelain and especially in Chinese export porcelain. Next year, we'll celebrate our 35th uh, year Mm -hmm. And we have the company divided in two uh, departments, if you want. Mm -hmm. The commercial side, in which we are dealers of uh, art, mm -hmm. and we sell from the galleries, and our aim is to source the best possible pieces for collectors and museums. We work with over 50 museums in the world. Mm -hmm. And then we have a second side, which is more academic, and we have a research team that researches every day of, of the year. We publish. We organize conferences, we curate exhibitions. The latest two exhibitions we curated were at the Barrel Collection and the Porcelain Room at the Prada Foundation in, uh, in Milan, which is a very interesting project where you bring Chinese porcelain to a contemporary uh, context. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we participate in, in some of the top fairs like TFF Maastricht and Fine Art Asia in Hong Kong, which we're very sorry not to be this year because of of the pandemic, but we'll return very soon, I hope. Oh, definitely. Um, we are very confident with the, um, the progress that we have here in, in Hong Kong. I think you are going to introduce or tell us a very interesting piece to the audience today. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yes, um, the piece is here with me and you can see it's a very fairly small a bowl about 17 centimeters diameter mm -hmm. with a with a Jiangjing mark mm -hmm. and uh, it's part of the exhibition that we opened this week okay. on Kinrandi wares yeah and Kinrandi wares are a very very special group of uh, pieces mm -hmm. uh, made in China for a period just under a uh, hundred years so from Jiajing 1522 to about 7, 1620 the one day period and um, which is basically the most common ones i've put a few here to show you mm -hmm. uh, in iron red mm -hmm. and then with gilt decoration mm -hmm. um, this is another ewer you can oh, see yes. of uh, of king randy and a very special piece here that i'll show you there's only nine mounted kirandi pieces in the world and this is probably one of the most exceptional mm -hmm. uh, pieces Although they were made for about a hundred years, very few pieces were made. Mm -hmm. It was thought for a while that most of them were made for the Japanese market. And uh, that's the country where you can still find most uh, Kidrandi. They were made for the tea ceremony, mm -hmm. the ewers and teapots and lots of bowls like this one that I showed you. Very few plates. I put one plate here to show you, but funny enough, the... the Mm. plates which are the most common uh, pieces in any production of Chinese porcelain. In Kinrandi they're very very rare probably because of the gilt that would yeah. wear very quickly. We're publishing a catalog next week mm. that has a lot of new research. Mm. We think that it was not made just for Japan but also for the domestic market. There's mm. some pieces made for that, that are in the Forbidden City for example. Mm -hmm. and for the Ottoman Empire, because you mm -hmm. find the biggest collection nowadays is in Topkapi. Mm -hmm. uh, you find Kirandi in um, lots of archaeological sites around the world, from South America to Europe to Middle East and so on. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting because it's uh, a type of Chinese porcelain that is very uh, refined, mm -hmm. very appealing uh, globally. So even pieces made for the domestic market and made for the Japanese market or the Ottoman market ended up in royal collections in Europe, ended up in South American collections. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Many of them use the Kunz camera pieces, mm -hmm. and yet there's so few of them. We think that there's probably less than a thousand, two thousand surviving pieces in the world. And the white ones, like this one, yeah. are the rarest. Rarest. So this is very, very rare to find a, a white Kirandi bow. Yeah. 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 When I do my own research, I, I don't see any example which is in white. This is why I think it's very interesting. And I observed that the material has a big influences to the Japanese ceramics as well in the later day. So, yes. yeah. In fact, they, they copied Kirandi. There's, there's Japanese Kirandi as well. Yeah. So it started from export or trade wear, but turned out to be the uh, domestic wear, like in Japan or outside China. I think it's very interesting pieces because we don't see much examples locally or in China. I think your catalog that come out next week with your exhibition will be very important. We're publishing a catalog in English and one in Chinese. Okay. And for you, you know, for the public to understand the, the rarity of Kinrandi, we started collecting Kinrandi for this exhibition, thinking we would be able to form a group in three, four years. Mm -hmm. In 1998, mm -hmm. it took us 22 years to put together 44 pieces. <laughs> this is how it, oh. it's the longest, longest exhibition ever for us. And during these 22 years, we sold two or three that we had repeats. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is how rare it is. There's very, very few yeah. uh, pieces of Kinrandi in, in the world. Yeah. So I think people who are interested in it, if, even if they cannot come to London, they can go through the website or the online platform, right? Yes, they can. And we hope we're crossing our fingers to have in the next few days every single piece of the exhibition on the web and maybe even a, a virtual exhibition that you can visit and, and go around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can visit our gallery and see lots of our yeah. uh, finest uh, export ways that we have. It. Yeah, I think this is one of the best chance uh, with people to go through an uh, outcome for which it's like 22 years long. So it's not easy, even with the expertise like you. So um, thank you very much, George, for your introduction and show us some interesting pieces today, especially the white bow. I hope I will see you very soon. And also the audience who are interested in it can come to visit your gallery very soon. Very good, then. Yeah. And, uh, hope to see you very soon in Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.